Coming up next on CTV News Tonight, Prince George is taking a stand for needy families. Coming up, today marks the one year anniversary of the Stand and Deliver program, a meal distribution system to help county residents during the pandemic. I'll have all the details up next on CTV News. Good evening, I'm Keisha Butts with a CTV News update. Our region continues to make progress on the COVID front. For the second time in as many days, the state reported no COVID deaths. Byron Scott has her story. That's right, two days back to back of no new COVID-19 deaths in Maryland. The last time there were no COVID-19 deaths, that was back in October of 2020. So the numbers are looking much better than they had been. And here are some other important numbers to consider. The state has confirmed 40 new cases over the past 24 hours. That's the second day in a row of under 50 cases. The positivity rate is now down to a record low of 0.66, and that's down 89% since April. And lastly, there are only three new hospitalizations in Maryland since yesterday. And the state is still urging people that even though the number is going in the right direction, you still need to get vaccinated. I'm Byron Scott. For more information on where you can get a vaccine, log on to mypgc.us slash COVID vaccine. Today marks a milestone anniversary for a program assisting Prince George's residents during the pandemic. Patricia Vallone is at Iverson Mall for a grocery and meal distribution event. I'm here in the parking lot of Iverson Mall, where county officials are recognizing the one year anniversary of the Stand Up and Deliver program. Now the meal and grocery distribution plan addresses food insecurity and basic needs across the county. It's been quite helpful because people have had limited mobility and there are a lot of people out there in need and they need to, we need to share. At this time, you know, the money I get in, I have to pay bills of certain things that I do to get my food supplement. I'm sorry, it's Taylor. my food supplement. It's your food supplement? Yes. So it's been very helpful in yeah. order during the pandemic? Yes, it has. We realize that food insecurity is an issue that predated COVID-19 and the pandemic. And so we're going to make sure that we are able to, um, to provide uh, this as long as possible. We're going through January of 2022. We've extended the program, uh, but we're going to be looking for ways to continue to address the issue of food insecurity in the county. Uh, and COVID-19, like so many other issues, uh, it really did unearth many of the structural kind of inequities that we had in the county and lack of access to healthy food is just one of them. When I first got out here, there were five rows deep of families who really are in need and every family comes with a story. It's everything from senior citizens who have felt isolated, but also have, you know, immunocompromised diseases and can't get out to the families with children who literally are, are making decisions about how do they feed their families. And so it's running the full gamut. Individuals who simply have lost jobs and just not able to make ends meet. We are very blessed to have the call from the Stand Up and Deliver program because it was at a time when we needed the most. We were able to bring back our chefs and some of our employees to service this uh, great need in the community. And the first time we delivered at a church with several hundred people lined up, it was a real blessing to be able to serve back to our community. Now, since the program began, more than 1.3 million meals have been provided at 23 locations across the county. From Hillcrest Heights, I'm Patricia Vallone for CTV News. A new mental health services program goes into effect in Maryland on July 1st. It will be run through the state's 211 system. It's an opt-in service for persons with mental health challenges. If you sign up, you'll get periodic wellness calls from the 211 center. The program is named after Thomas Bloom Raskin, the son of a Maryland congressman who lost his life to mental health issues. We aren't just memorializing Tommy's memory. We're also ensuring that his name will forever be a symbol of hope for others who are struggling with mental health issues. Particularly after all we've been through over these past 16 months, it is critically important that we continue to focus on the issue of mental health. Again, the program goes into effect next month. The state of Maryland falls in rankings for child well-being. The state is now ranked 24th nationally, according to Maryland Matters. An estimated 157,000 children live below the federal poverty level. 48,000 don't have health insurance. 
Also, 51% of kids ages 3 to 4 are not enrolled in preschool programs. If you're watching CTV News, I'm Keisha Butts. Coming up, we visit again with Darren Gilchrist and talk about his challenges attending med school during the pandemic. Stay with us. Right here, baby. Look. Uma. Something more than a birthday is happening here. Once you can see it, you can help. The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. Welcome back. Taking anatomy classes online, having limited access to clinics, and having trouble building relationships. These are just a few of the challenges for a first-year University of Maryland medical student. This is Darren Gilchrist from Landover. Gilchrist says his first year was anything from normal due to COVID. He says it was difficult scheduling lab times and hard focusing during online courses. A major challenge Gilchrist also experienced was not meeting with his classmates in person. So that has a huge impact on study groups and just, you know, going through something, you know, as challenging as medical school and not really having a lot of people around you um, that, you know, you can really just communicate with, socialize with to help take the stress down a bit because you don't really know them because, you know, you haven't been a person, haven't been able to have those, you know, simple conversations that you can have when you're you know, right sitting next to people or getting, you know, lunch or something afterwards. Gilcrest says the university is lifting its COVID-19 restrictions in July. With the temperature getting warmer by the day, many families will be heading to the pool to beat the heat. CTV's Katera Jones is at Glendale Splash Park with everything you need to know. Well, it's finally time for some summer fun in the pool. But before you bring your families here to the Glendale Splash Park or any county run pool, officials say there are still COVID related guidelines that everyone must follow. We are currently operating all of our pools in the department at 50% capacity. Um, we're still hoping to promote social distancing, um, although it's not uh, required through the state and the county. We still would like to um, ensure that patrons feel safe when they come to our pools. Outdoors, masks are not required. However, if patrons feel more comfortable wearing a mask, they can absolutely do so. We just ask that you don't wear a mask when you get into the water. We just always encourage um, a consistent supervision while you're at a pool. So if your child has not had swim lessons or is not comfortable in water, you want to make sure that you are within arm's reach. So parents should also come prepared to swim, get into the water with their children, be within arm's reach and provide that additional layer of supervision. Of course, we'll always have certified lifeguards on surveillance duty in the chairs and roving the deck, but we also um, request the support of parents with supervising their children while they're at the pool. This particular pool is clean. They're doing the distancing. Uh, you had to make reservations to come in. So you know what, get them out. The kids need to have a little fun. It's safe. For more information on any county run pool, visit pgparks.com. Reporting in Glendale, Katara Jones, CTV News. Stewart says that all 14 county-run pools are open to the public. Again, for more information, visit pgparks.com. The Prince George's Police Department is unveiling a new crime-fighting initiative at a town hall tonight. It's called Operation Heat Wave. County Executive Angela Osterbrooks and Acting Chief Malik Aziz will discuss the plan tonight. The event will be in person and virtually. Participants will have a chance to ask questions. The town hall starts at 6 tonight at Suitland High School at 5200 Silver Hill Road. To view online, go to the link at the bottom of your screen. A Capitol Heights man was fatally shot at a firehouse in Charles County over the weekend. The victim is 25-year-old Leon N. Abbott. Officials say the victim attended a birthday party at the Byron's Road Volunteer Station on Livingston Road Sunday evening. N. Abbott was in the back parking lot after the event when someone shot at him. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he later died. Anyone with information on this case is asked to contact Charles County Crime Solvers at 1-866-411-TIPS. 
A University of Maryland doctoral student was killed in Chicago over the weekend. The student has been identified as 31-year-old Inat Kimchi. Police found Kimchi suffering from stab wounds to her upper back Saturday afternoon. She was taken to a hospital where she died. The University of Maryland is providing counseling services to students, faculty, and staff. That number is 301-314-7651. Still to come on CTV News tonight, they're simply too sweet to pass up. We're at a Silver Spring cookie shop right after the break. Stay with us. Why is ambition respected in men and criticized in women? We may think ambition in women is a good thing, but because of a lifetime of cultural stereotypes, we react negatively. That's unconscious bias. But can unconscious bias really limit women's success? Well, when asked to draw a leader, the vast majority of people, both men and women, draw a man. When we imagine positions of power, we erase women from the picture. Today, only 5% of CEOs are women. It's time to challenge cultural stereotypes and outmoded mindsets. The world is a better place when we support one another's ambitions, whatever they may be. Together, let's question the biases that hold people back. Voice our ambition proudly, without apology. Model ambition for our sons and daughters. Our ambition is to challenge double standards to help achieve women's equality. What's yours? I'm Mindy Kaling, and I embrace ambition. Welcome back. Today is not just the first full day of summer, it's also the first day you can register for the Alsobrook Summer Passport Program for Youth. The initiative is aimed at keeping young people between the ages of 12 and 18 busy this summer. Activities will be centered around the three E's, education, entrepreneurship, and entertainment. They include classes on drones and cybersecurity, Shark Tank, and a basketball tournament, to name a few. But there is much, much more. The program costs $20 for all who take part. You can register by going to the link at the bottom of your screen. Interested in a career as a correctional officer? The county's Department of Corrections is looking for people to fill current and future vacancies for Correctional Officer Academy classes. The department says it's seeking men and women who exhibit good character, sound judgment, reliability, and integrity. Training and benefits are provided. The position is designed as essential and bilingual candidates are encouraged to apply. For more information, log on to PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov and search for employment offer. Opportunities. From working for universities to whipping up delicious baked goods in her kitchen, a Silver Spring woman turned a pandemic nightmare around. This is Jessica Lug. After losing her job, she took her husband's advice and launched Simply Sweet Confections in February. She makes anything from chocolate chip cookies to snickerdoodles. She also bakes brownies, cupcakes, and blondies that she delivers across the DMV area. Lug says she's shocked her business has become successful. If you were to ask me a year ago today, if this is something that I'd be doing, if that I'd be a business owner, I would be like, no way, not for me, not me. You got me confused with someone else. Um, so shocked would be one, but also super happy because I mean, I love baking. This is what I love to do. And so to turn that into a business and to profit off of it, I mean, what more can a person ask for? For more information, visit simplysweetconfectionsmd.com. Com. The city of Laurel is alerting motorists about road closures. The county's Department of Public Works and Transportation is closing Bowie Road to Marshall Avenue starting today. It's to repair the existing bridges over the Bear Branch stream that lead to the Patuxent River. The area will be closed until September. And now a brief look at our weather forecast tonight. Showers likely with lows near 70. Tomorrow showers with highs in the 70s. Wednesday sunny skies with highs around 77 degrees. Thursday sunshine continues highs near 80. And now for your community calendar. School officials are hosting an end of the school year celebration. It's taking place Friday, June 25th at Walker Mill Park in Capitol Heights. There will be food, fun, and music for all. The event runs from 5 to 7 p.m. For more information, call 301-952-6115. And that wraps up your CTV News update. Join us again tomorrow. I'm Keisha Butts. Have a good night.